All right, there you go, Megan. You can go ahead and start. Can you hear me now? Are you there, Sarah? Can you guys hear me? I dialed in with my phone because my computer audio was not working. But I'm unsure if I can be heard right now, unless Sarah tells me she can hear me. I don't want to start unless I know I'm heard. Megan, you're good now. It was not my end. OK. <laughs> No, um, I have issues with my computer microphone and I don't have my little microphone that I usually use. I guess I misplaced it. Um, so I just had to call in with my phone to use that audio. So as long as you can hear me now, we're good. Get started. Um, I am Megan. You're good to start now. Sorry. Okay, sorry about that little pickup there. Um, technology is super fun. Um, but I hope that a lot of you have been on the previous um, webinars. In this one, we are going to talk about feeding senior horses because, as Sarah said, uh, typically all horse owners at some point in their life have a senior horse, and they're definitely um, special in the way that you approach feeding them and determining what a senior horse actually is. So um, before we start, I just want to let you know that if you text the word Purina to 57682, you can get a $10 off Purina feed coupon. And that is just a link that is sent to you. And you click on it, and it'll ask you a few questions. And then a Purina coupon will be emailed to you. And if you don't catch this number right now, I'll show it again at the end of the presentation. All right, so as I said, for this meeting, we are going to seniors because like I said, just about every horse owner at some point in their life has to um, feed a horse as it's aging. And we approach this in a much different way than feeding a um, mature. And if you haven't been on uh, any of the previous webinars, I'm just going to introduce If you have been on the previous webinars, then you've heard about this before. Uh, for those that didn't catch it yet, my name is Megan Kraut. I am the sales specialist for Purina in central New York. I grew up in Massachusetts and I lived on a really small little hobby farm. We had horses and goats and chickens. I went to SUNY Cobleskill and I got my bachelor's in agricultural business. And now I've been with Purina for a little bit over a year and I have a pretty neat job where I get to help horse owners keep healthy, happy horses by working with them to provide horses with the best nutrition available. While I'm not working, I spend a lot of time hanging out with my husband and my two and a half year old son, who you'll see both of them pictured there. And I'm also a horse owner myself. I have a 13 year old off track thoroughbred named Wesley, who I do some lower level eventing with. And there's lots of pictures of him up there too. All right, so first question you wanna ask yourself is, is your horse a senior? And this is really an important question um, because many people think it's a horse's age, but that is not always the case. For horses, just like humans, age is strictly just a number. Horses' life expectancies have changed a lot over the years. Um, they went from kind of pulling carts and buggies and being workhorses to being our pets. And with developments and huge improvements in healthcare, dental care, and nutrition, 
we found ways that we can support the horses so much better as they get into their older age. And we see horses well into their 20s these days continuing to work and compete and totally be thriving. So it's really important to remember that age is just a number and age does not decide whether your horse is considered a senior or not. So what does make a horse a senior horse? If age doesn't signify a horse is a senior or not, what exactly makes a horse old? The main focus when determining if a horse needs a senior diet or what kind of senior diet they need is really how well they're able to eat their hay and utilize that fiber. That's really something we're gonna focus on a lot in this presentation. Poor dentition is a main reason horses can't utilize their hay, like the horse pictured on this slide. This horse would most likely need a complete senior diet because typically teeth like that um, can't eat hay very well. But you can have a horse that's 25 or 26 with a great set of teeth and absolutely no issues eating hay. So we go back to that um, point of age really just being a number. And when a horse is no longer able to bring in and effectively chew enough roughage to satisfy their minimum needs, and we talked about in the last couple webinars that horses really need one to two percent of their body weight a day um, in roughage to support them. And so if they can't maintain that, you'll start to see them drop condition if you're not supplementing their diet with an adequate amount of forage. So a little bit more about signs of aging. When you're assessing your horse and making that decision as to whether they need a senior diet or not, there's a few different things that we'll look at. Weight loss, decreased body condition, those are probably the first two things that people will start to notice. Um, and then there's loss of muscle mass. Changes in their eating behavior, like dropping feed, quitting, which is when they ball up hay in their mouth, and spitting out hay, or just slower eating in general. Horses can get a dull coat, and um, a lot of the horses with poor dentition are prone to choke. So you might see that start happening in some of these older horses as well. And aging can also have effects on your horse that aren't visible like a decline in immunization and increased inflammation. And something that has been found with horses aging is they develop a chronic low-grade inflammation, uh, just like humans do, kind of get a little bit sore and your joints don't want to be as limber as they used to be. Um, and this inflammation can cause an increased risk for age-associated diseases, which in turn causes an increased mortality rate. And we also see a decreased ability to resist infection. Again, we see this in humans. Um, and the immune system just doesn't function like it once did. So that will cause increased susceptibility to disease and a reduced response to vaccination. So knowing these things, how great would it be if we could address them via nutrition? Through years of research and trials, Purina has actually been able to do that. Um, active age prebiotic is only found in Purina's um, equine senior and equine senior active and a prebiotic is essentially a food for the good bugs that aid in digestion and a horse's digestive tract. Purina partnered with the University of Kentucky's Gluck Requine, Equine Research Center to investigate the effects of active age on aging horses. During a multi-year study, researchers looked at how Supplementation of this affected immune and vaccine responses in senior horses and conducted studies to determine the most effective supplementation level. In these studies, they found that horse, that senior horses eating active age helped support 
response to the flu vaccine and supported their aging immune function. It also supports the healthy hindgut microflora. So this graph that you see up here, this um, measures the TNF alpha in the horses, and this is a marker of inflammation. So um, one thing to know is that this study was done going into winter months, and uh, seasonally it's expected to see a rise in inflammation in these horses. Um, but the blue line you will see is the equine senior with active age and the red line is regular equine senior without active age and the blue line you see it's much lower markers of inflammation so these horses just adding this active age to their diet saw uh, over time a decreased amount of inflammation um, which is pretty neat My, did I not go to my next slide? Oh, geez. Sorry. Okay. I went back a slide. Sorry about that. And we have another graph here showing the immune response to the flu vaccine with horses eating equine senior with and without active age. And the horses eating active age showed a higher antibody titer than those not. So, what does this tell us? Um, that the research proves this particular prebiotic increased both immune and vaccine responses. And, and active age is proprietary to Purina and can only be found in our equine senior and equine senior active feed. And I just wanted to touch on that because um, inflammation and immune response is a, a big thing that we see in senior horses that we may not really always think about. And then before we talk about what you should be feeding your senior horses, I wanted to touch on the difference between complete feeds and concentrate. Um, a complete feed contains both concentrate and forage portions of your horse's diet and is meant to be fed as your horse's complete diet. So a complete feed should be your horse's complete diet. Uh, and these feeds typically have a fairly high feeding rate because they're replacing a horse uh, your horse's forage source. And a concentrate is like your typical grain that you're used to seeing. It has a lower feeding rate to supplement your horse's forage component. So these are meant to be fed alongside um, hay or pasture at that one to 2% of their body weight. So what do you feed? So you come to the conclusion that your horse is a senior and they're no longer utilizing their hay, what do you feed them? When horses lose the ability to chew and digest long stem forage, you'll need, oh, I'm sorry, I'm pressing my button. Um, when horses lose the ability to chew and digest long stem forage, you'll need a horse feed that's formulated with built-in forage and fiber sources. These are designed to supplement the hay or pasture a horse needs in a way that's easy to chew and digest. Some horses with severe dental issues or missing teeth um, need something that's somewhat easy to soak. Purina's Equine Senior has a pellet that actually has what we call an easy soak technology, and it creates a mash in just about five minutes, uh, which is super convenient versus soaking like the feeding before. And Impact Senior doesn't have um, that easy soak te technology, but it does soak nicely. It just might take a little bit longer. And horses that are prone to choke, which we touched on before, would really benefit from these mashes as well. And uh, senior horses also tend to be picky, which can be a challenge in maintaining weight. So a highly palatable feed is really important. Uh, and at Purina, we do a lot of palatability research. We have a section of our research farm that is focused just on that and horses that specialize in choosing what feed they like better. I would like to have that job. And um, 
these feeds, as we talked about, have a higher feeding rate. These are meant to be fed as a complete diet. So they are replacing the horse's um, forage component if your horse can't chew hay or digest hay. And you want their feed to be easily digestible. So really high quality ingredients um, that will move through these horses pretty nicely. And now let's say your horse doesn't have an issue eating hay, but you're seeing some of the other signs associated with aging, like maybe some inflammation, um, maybe they are getting sick easier, um, or they're just seeming a little bit old. And Equine Senior Active has all the great things that support senior horses, but is formulated to be fed as a concentrate along with hay. So it has a lower feeding rate. Um, like four to six pounds versus a complete feed, which typically needs to be fed at least six pounds. But if you are replacing the total forage component of like a thousand pound horse, that can be fed in upwards of like 15 pounds, um, which adds up pretty quickly. And I also want to another, mention another really great product that Purina has that can be really good for these aging horses. Um, hay stretcher is a great option for aging horses or any horse that's just not a great hay eater, um, but they're not quite ready to be on a complete senior diet yet. This um, is a great tool for adding more digestible fiber to your horse's diet. It also soaks really nicely into a mash. So again, great for those horses that are prone to choke. Um, and a note on choke, once a horse chokes once, they're really, really, really susceptible to do it again. So you really have to approach feeding them um, with caution and be a little bit on the, the safer side. Um, and the hay structure can actually replace all of the horse's forage if needed. It's another complete feed we have, and it's a great thing to use in times of inconsistent hay supply and quality. Um, so not just for senior horses, but a really great tool for them as well. And I just wanted to touch on a few things as we wrap this up. This was a fairly short presentation, um, but remember that age is just a number, your horse, is not considered a senior just because of their age. I know I often run into people that will start feeding a senior feed when their horse is like 15 or 16, um, but they're not showing signs of aging. They're still eating their hay just fine. So really they don't need a senior feed. Um, they can go along on a regular concentrate and do, do just fine. And it's important to remember the difference between a complete feed and a concentrate. Complete feeds are meant to be fed as a horse's complete diet versus a concentrate is meant to supplement um, a hay and pasture. And typically it will stay on the tag or on the bag somewhere if the feed can replace a horse's hay source. And it's really, really important that if you have a horse that's not eating their hay that you are switching to a complete feed because the forage component of a horse's diet is the most important part of their diet. Um, so watch your horse's hay intake. If they start slowing down on their hay intake, it might be time to, to think about making a change. And think about active age. Um, again, those signs of aging that we don't see, which is inflammation and immune response, uh, it's pretty cool to have a product that has that built right into it and addresses that over time. And that's um, only in our equine senior and equine senior active. And again, if you want a coupon for $10 off a bag of Purina feed, you can text the word Purina to 57682. And a couple other tools we have, if you go to the Purina Mills website, you can take a feed greatness challenge, which you sign up and you'll get two buy one, get one coupons sent to you. Um, so it's a nice little 
extra incentive to um, make a change and, and we put some skin in the game there. And make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We have some pretty exciting new products coming out um, this month, actually. And I think April 5th, they're doing a neat um, webinar, or they call it a checkerboard chat, on our Facebook page on that. And you can always contact me if you have any questions. That is my phone number and my email address, and I'm more than happy to help anyone out with any questions, come out to your farm and look at your horses and make some recommendations. That is my favorite thing to do. And that is the end of my slideshow. Well, thank you so much, Megan. And I think I'll lead off with uh, two things. So I don't see any questions yet popping in our question box. But one is we do have, or you forgot to mention about the uh, chestnut mayor fix all that came out today. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really, really funny <laughs> April Fool's joke. Yeah, if you want to see a funny uh, April Fool's joke, go to the Purina Facebook page and see what they posted today. Um, it's called Purina Horse Feed, and you'll probably get a good chuckle out of it. I'm not going to lie. When I first wonder. saw that, I was like, hmm, I wonder if I would work for bourbon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah, and I was like, it, oh, that's a joke. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah was, that, that was a good one. <laughs> All right. Uh, one question I do have, though, a serious question in that. Um, a lot of times, and I've witnessed this before, uh, when my old horse, when I was a kid, that senior feet sometimes have a um, the adverse reaction where the horses get hyper. So how do you discuss when people ask you that type of question or will this cause my horse to get hyper? Um, so if you're feeding a senior feed at a rate that is um, replacing their forage, you have to feed it at a pretty high rate. So you actually want to make sure that you have a feed that's very balanced in fiber and calories. So you don't want to be feeding a ton of extra calories in order to get that fiber component in their diet. Um, and one misconception that I see often is that senior feeds are really good for hard keepers. And not that that's not true because they're very easily digestible, um, easy on their stomach, so they can utilize the nutrition really well. But typically, they're a lot lower in calories. So switching a horse from uh, like a performance horse feed to a senior feed, thinking you're going to get weight on them and feeding at the same rate is actually not going to do that in most cases. Uh, so yeah, just making sure that your senior feed is lower in starches and sugars and um, that you're feeding the recommended amount would be two things I would keep an eye on. Okay. And uh, what person in the chat box said, if a senior horse is eating hay well, well I gotta click on the dots. All right. If a senior horse is eating well, please. 1.5 VW, how would, how do you know if the horse is digesting the hay? Um, if they are keeping condition on eating hay and have normal manure, then they're likely utilizing it. If they're eating it, but they're going to lose weight or they have really loose stool, then they're um, just can't handle a long stemmed forage but if they're I mean if they're eating all that hay and they're keeping condition um, then I'm sure they're utilizing it just fine but when you see that loss in condition is when you kind of have to question um, how well they're digesting it
All right, Dan, I'm going to try and unmute you because I'm not sure what the question is that you're asking or the statement. All right, Dan, you should be unmuted now. I'm working on it. Yeah. Oh, you could have just at, you know, you could have spoke. I have you unmuted right now. Now I'm not muted. I was. Okay. Yeah, because I unmuted you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so the question is, I, I look at um, some fee tags, and some of them have an open code dating, which is easy. You know, it says April 1st, 2021. Got it. Some of them have... Yeah. A string of characters that don't mean anything to me and then that's yeah. the first part of the question second part of the question is that date on the code on the tag is that the date it was made the date i should not feed it after or what so typically you'll find the date code and that is the date it was made okay. um and different seeds have different shelf life depending on if they're pelleted, if they're textured, the fat content, if they're extruded. Um, so I would call or email that particular company. If it's Purina, I can tell you. Um, okay. If not, I, I can't. Yeah, um, got it. And yeah, the, the date code too, I know some of them you'll see, I mean, it'll be very clear and others are a string of characters and numbers. And that's typically because it also says where it was made mm -hmm. and goes even as far as to like what run it was made in. So it, so it, that gives a very specific thing and that's to track um, quality control. And if there's ever any issues, they can track it pretty closely to where the issue might've happened. Um, okay. but if it's I don't a have a problem with them putting in a whole lot of extra stuff. I wish they would just put Here's a date, and here's our extra stuff that you don't need to worry about. Yeah, I know. What is yeah, Purina? They could, um, so Purina, it usually says the date, and then the the date number, and then the month, and then it will have where it was made and the run it was made on. So where so it will make be some can, kind of code that I would have to have someone decode for me it won't say like yeah the, the, yeah the where it was made probably isn't as um clear i mean so for us seeds you would find in new york are either made in harrisburg in pennsylvania or in gilderland new york oh okay nearby yep yep mm -hmm. everything is uh there i mean where a company that spans across the whole united states but your feed is made yeah. very local so I know some people buy Purina particularly because they know they can get it across the country. Yep. But if I buy yeah, this, that's one of the of this particular that. type of Purina feed in New York, and then I go to California, how similar is the feed here to what I buy under the same label in California? Uh, they're going to be as similar as we can get them. Nutritionally, they're going to be the same. Sometimes ingredients could be a little different just what is locally available in New York isn't always going to be exactly the same in California, but um, nutritionally, they should be the same. And that's that um, one of our things that we do at the plant when seed comes in is they, they test the actual batch of seed to see mm -hmm. the nutrient contents of it. And then they will adjust the formula depending on the nutrient contents of that actual batch of feed. So we're not going off of a general standard of what oats is. It's of that particular load of oats. Um, okay. So that you'll, you'll see nutritionally our feed being really, really consistent. Okay. Um, so I, I know horses don't like to get changes in diet. Will right. the horse notice California Purina is much different from New York Purina? Um, no, I Again, don't think so. We have horses, 
no, we have horses that come up, travel from Florida to New York all the time, and they eat feed down there and then come up and switch and have absolutely no issues. Okay. That's a good thing. So right and now I have my horses on a hay balancer. Okay. A ration balancer, and they're, they're getting a whole yeah. pound a day of it. Um, I, I remember feeding two quart scoops, you know, and yeah. now I'm, I'm looking at the, at a yogurt cup and I'm going, yeah, it's nice when you can just feed a ration balancer. I wish I could do that with my horse. Yeah. Well, it also depends on what hay you get. Yeah, that's very true. It is. And yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I deal directly with the grower and I get really good hay. That's great. Yeah, yeah. it is getting great hay is the best thing that you can do it helps everything's sure good about does. it except putting it away in the upstairs uh, yeah that's never fun i don't think any hay is good for that no um so i'm assuming in central new york where is purina sold um I'm near utica near Utica, there yeah. is a dealer um, in Vernon. Um, that... Oh, I know her. So there used to be one called Carhartt, but they sadly closed. Yes. And now Sarah? there's another There's another one in that town at um, Richardson's Farms. Okay, them I don't know. I know Carhartt. Yeah, so they're right up the road from where Carhartt's was. Okay. Is she still um, selling your feed? Because I, I know she's talking about selling out of a more compact location. Sarah. Um, I don't, as far as I know, no. Oh, okay. Um, Any of the big boxes? Uh, Tractor Supply has Purina. Okay. Do you know if they, you, I'm assuming you have some kind of hay balancer, ration balancer? Yep. Um, Enrich Plus would be our ration balancer. Okay. And is that locally available? Yep. It should be available at any Purina dealer. And you can also go right on the Purina Mills website, and there is a buy button up at towards the top. And if you click on that, you just put your zip code in, and it'll tell you all the dealers um, oh, within okay. a certain radius of you. And feel free to also email me or something, and I can help you find it too. Okay, where's seven seven four area code? Massachusetts. Ah, okay. I've had that number since I was like thirteen, I think. <laughs> Holding on to it. <laughs> yeah, um, I had a phone when I was thirteen. It was on the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're funny. dating yourself right now. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> But I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, so you're not in Massachusetts now then? No, I'm in New York now. Okay. All right, so here Sarah, who's here besides us? I see three of us. Oh, you're muted now, I think, Sarah. Oh, she Sorry, muted herself. I thought I unmuted myself. No, so right now, as far as board members, there's just me and you, but then we still have um, 10 other attendees, or love, sorry, nine other attendees. Um, but I will say, I'm gonna go ahead and put you on mute, okay, Dan? Go ahead. All right. All right, this is actually a really good point to make that, um, Megan did do a presentation last month that talked about ration balancers and different types of feeds. And that webinar is available on our YouTube channel. So feel free to check out our YouTube channel. Those are past webinars as well as this webinar will also be on our YouTube channel. Um, another reminder that this is what's recorded, so it will be up there and will also be sent out to every attendee. And our next webinar is May 6th at 6 o'clock with Dr. Anna Pasta, which is the Purina's nutri equine nutritionist. And that is a 
New York State Forest Council member exclusive event. So you will need to join prior to the um, prior to the webinar to attend. But if you attend or if you join after May or April 15th, please email me and I will give you registration information. All right. Is there anything else you want to say, Megan? I don't think so. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, everyone.